Well, it's a day or so later. Um, there's the braces all glued in. Uh, I've started. Um, I've started uh, getting this one down to size. Um, I mean, really, if I'd have thought about it, I could have probably actually just bent one of these things and cut it down the middle and used it both sides. Uh, yeah, another day, another dollar, I guess, for that one. Um, but yeah, I've kind of cut, obviously cut this one a lot, a lot thinner now. Um, I don't know for you woodworking people out there whether you've tried these Japanese saws. They're absolute beautiful things. They actually cut on the pull and if you look they've got a really vicious set of teeth on them. I mean this is an old blade but it's still very very sharp. Um, but they just cut straight and they're a very very thin blade so they go through everything. I mean the the problem with um, you know your typical tenon saw or something like that is because it cuts on the push you have to have um, a backing on the blade to hold it straight otherwise it's going to go all wobbly but because these cut on the pull um, you know they can have a very thin blade so you're actually cutting um, you know you're actually cutting a lot less wood and getting it done a lot quicker but I, I love these things and the nice thing is is you can easily you just buy a new blade put it on but this saw it is so good I abuse it because I use it for everything I should really keep it aside and nice but anyway now, um, this is the bit I cut off, um, I mean I just did it in there and just went along and, and that was it. Um, so this is the bit I cut off and now I'm getting to plane these down and after all the hard work of uh, hogging out the inside and, and shaping everything, this is really, really pleasurable. Um, regarding the profile of the braces, I haven't got a Scooby Doo. Um, I mean, basically, uh, I'm just going to make them look elegant. Um, they've, obviously, they've got to be a bit deeper over the bridge where the main force is, kind of thing. But apart from that, I'm just going to cut them down until they look nice. Um, there's nothing I can follow. And uh, yep, yeah, so, but th like I say, your little trusty plane, and you can just. Uh, beaver away I want to get this area down down here um, step down over the bridge so I'll concentrate on well not over the bridge just either side of the bridge One of the uh, interesting thing I've seen with uh, braces actually is um, a lot of people leave them square, especially in older instruments they just tend to be square like that and almost look like scraps of wood. Other people taper them, um, which I will do on this, take these chunks off the edge and just make them sort of more of a triangular section, I think it looks nicer and makes them lighter and I always think light is best on, on acoustic instruments. Um, the other thing is I've actually seen people use very deep braces that are scalloped 
it almost looked like some kind of dinosaur fin or something in there um, and the idea with that is uh, people sometimes in, in acoustic instruments um, they actually cut the braces to more of a curve than the top of the guitar and actually spring the top down on them so the top is slightly spring loaded um, which they say gives the guitar more of a powerful tone which I can kind of sign up to but the problem is with that is that if you've got thin braces like this okay they'll keep tension in the top for a while but after a while the wood will relax and move and you lose it so some people use very deep braces that are scalloped out that I've seen and that's an interesting thing that I perhaps want to try sometime and see if it um, works but anyway I'll switch you off now and you can see what I'm doing and get back to you when we got it down to a good looking size well, um, I've let's see what I've done to this brace now. I've got it roughly down to um, what looks right, um, and I'm leaving it thicker underneath the the bridge there. So I'm just chamfering these sides, these ends off now. Um, I'll do the top and bottom end. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that now. So what I'm going to do is chamfer them down to a triangular profile. Try and use me a little plane for that. bring you back when uh, when we got some results well here we go um, I've got this brace where I want it to be or where I think it should be I mean I'm not going to pretend that oh yeah this is the be all and end all of braces because I haven't got a scooby-doo really what what the hell it should be but um, it's kind of the same thickness depth as 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 uh, other mandolins on that F5 plan I've got. Um, I've also spent a little time, just uh, five minutes sanding, and now I'll do a bit more. Um, but like I said at the beginning of this as well, is I've, I'm, I'm kind of of two minds when it comes to the inside of instruments. A lot of them you see nowadays are absolutely beautifully finished inside, which I like. But every every vintage instrument I've done is pretty rough inside, actually, you know, with saw marks and whatnot. And in, on on the on the other hand, with that sort of thing, I do like the honesty of it. Um, you know, you can see the things being made, and you know, the instrument has to be sold. There has to be a budget, and you know, if you can do something a bit quicker, you save money. But you know, at the end of the day, everybody seems to be like um, on a holy grail quest to um, reproduce old instruments. So, yeah, I'm going to leave this one, you know, chips and all inside sort of thing, um, just because it will be quicker. Um, and it's copying an old instrument anyway. So, um, that's the route I'm going to do. But I'm going to get on now, get this. Uh, get this brace the same as this one and then um, we'll see where we go from there I just wanted to show you how well these uh, these Japanese saws work and bear in mind this is a shitty old blade kind of thing but you know you can put it in here and
Didn't take long, did it? One minute 47 till I started the video. And if you look at it, I don't know if you can see the pencil line I've drawn round, round it. Absolutely perfect. 10 out of 10 to the, the Japanese saw makers. So let's get on and uh, do the same to do the same to this one. Anybody want any bent braces? Gonna make one. Okie doke. Okay, there we go. We've got the two the two braces in now. Um, so I probably think the next thing um, to do is either I'm going to cut the cut the sound hole or really anything to put off starting on the back this has got the whole thing to do again you know but I suppose let's go and get it <clears throat> here's the back um, rather nice it's a uh, well it's definitely mahogany type of wood I don't know what it is but it's it's likely to be prehistoric because uh, it came from my dad's house and uh, with some shelves in his dining room and uh, it's certainly very lightweight um, which is really nice um, I wouldn't know the species of wood apart from a generic kind of mahogany but uh, God knows where he even got it from because he was uh, more of a skin flint than me getting stuff. So, um, yep, there we go. I think uh, very simply what we'll do is stick this on there, draw around it. And then at least we'll have uh, I think my um, I think my idea with the back, you know, it's it, it, it's obviously a fairly mammoth task. Um, but uh, what I'm going to do is get it cut out, and then um, it'll be a background job to do in the rest of the instrument sort of thing. You know, I can. Sometimes you come in the shed and you just yeah you, you don't feel like thinking about anything, so you can just sit there and whittle away for ages and do a bit of carving. So um, I think I will get it cut out, ready to go, sort of thing, and um, fit it in between the other jobs that uh, I've got on either customers' guitars or building this sort of thing. So uh, let's get cutting it out.
Ah, seven minutes of band sawing, but ooh, look, another one. Um, yeah, I would never be without my band saw. Um, yeah, just wondering what we can do now. I'll probably just drill these out and just get it ready so I can do it in the background. But I've just noticed that my dad's obviously have had something screwed down to his shelf, sort of thing on here. So there's a few wormholes in it. But uh, yeah, prefer to use it in memory of him. And uh, yeah, if I ever get to play it, uh, be like a, quite good. So I think it's a cup of coffee for me. Well, we've got the back um, cut out now. now. I seem to have made a bit of a cock up on um, on this here. Um, and I've drilled the hole too far. Um, well too far towards the inside so I've missed the kind of heel off this swan neck bit which is a bit bloody annoying but I, I just have to add a little bit um, I mean the grain is very straight so I'm pretty sure you won't see it I mean that's one of the I think one of the really awkward things about this instrument is that you know you have to get the edges accurate um, before you start carving and stuff like that because the top's got this um, steep radius um, around the edge sort of thing um, so anyway um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not overly bothered about it um, so I'm going to leave that aside and uh, just uh, get on it when I'm when I'm um, not you know when I'm not inspired to uh, start something new sort of thing so glad to get that chopped to size um, another little bit done uh, but uh, what, what do we do now I'm thinking of cutting the um, thinking of cutting the sound hole in here so we'll have an investigate into that and see how we go so here we've got the uh, sound hole on the instrument um, fortunately again on the, 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 the from the museum site you've got accurate dimensions of sound hole height 45 mil sound hole width 70 mil so um, just actually marked where I think the center is so Half of 77 by my uh, reckoning is 38 and a half. So we've got the position position of the sound hole now marked marked on here. I mean, it's a bit difficult to actually. Uh, <clears throat> I mean it's an oval hole so uh, I don't know I, I, I did do a draw do the drawing so I guess I'll trace it off here Yeah, so we've got a rough tracing of it there. I just want to have a look at it compared to the the drawing, whether it seems the same. Um, I know that uh, the scale on this drawing is roughly 3.9 to 1, so um, if I measure the sound hole from the back, We've got 48 millimetres on the sketch, so if I times that by 3.9, so I make that as near as damn it, 
90. Oh, that's not right. Hundred and hundred and ninety millimeters from the back. That do it. That's absolutely spot on. It's under well, only times forty eight by four kind of thing, and I've got it on mine as. 187 millimetres, so I think that hole's in the right place. Now I'm just going to make it the right shape. Ah, oh. okey doke. Well, I've kind of um, hacked out the the hole. I just drilled four um, four holes in it and went across there with a hacksaw blade just to get it roughly out, but. I'll be using the trusty bobbin sander and I can just pop that through there and uh, get to size. I, I don't like fret sawing uh, very thin wood very much, um, probably because I haven't got very good fret saw, but you're likely to split the edge so or tear the edge a little bit, so I'd prefer to do it like this and uh, we can do that so we can get on. we go I've got about probably a millimeter to go all the way around but I'll, I'm gonna finish that by hand and just make sure I've got a nice uh, nice symmetrical um, nice symmetrical uh, shape but yeah uh, we kind of kind of there so I think every little bit we do yeah good good well I've spent a little more time on the sound hole and cleaned it up um, one thing I left quite a lot of meat, um, quite a lot of wood thickness around the uh, the neck heel. I didn't want to hurry into that, um, and you can see it's it's pretty uneven thickness around there. So having the sound hole cut will allow me now to tidy up the thickness of the wood around the neck heel. I mean, I can feel I've got a lump there anyway, sort of thing. Um, but I'll be carving that down to size, down to thickness kind of thing and uh, at least having the sound hole there allows you to you know get work on the work on the thickness of the top as well so I think just basically now I like tidy it up. Uh, good morning, well it might be early afternoon but there we go. Um, I've decided I've been um, pontificating a bit with myself as you know what's the what's the best step to do next I mean I, I, I tend with all my projects to kind of build them as a kit um, so you're not doing like just one bit and moving on to the next bit sequentially I, I like the change of being able to you know do a neck then do a body do a bit of carving or whatever just split the project up a bit really um, but I think I've got to start getting things together now. Um, the main reason is uh, I can't really finish carving the inside um, until I get the top on the sides because I can't do these little edges neatly to the edge of these at all. Um, so I think yeah I think it's going to be a big step today in getting the top the top glued on um, you know this is this is going to be a difficult uh, job I mean I say difficult but I, I think really um, it's just got to be done you know you can't wing it at all you've got to set up do it properly now the thing with um, gluing the top and back on on a guitar is that you know if you're building 
like you know 10 of them or something then you know you can you can make the proper jigs and clamping things to do it like what you'd normally do you'd get the top you'd get a big bit of plywood you you you'd like cut a step you know you'd, you'd cut a, um, a, a perimeter out if you like glue it to that bit of plywood so you'd have a clamp that would press down evenly on all the all the corners but I mean that is a hell of a lot of work for um, for a, um, a you know a one-off job essentially and um, what I actually do I mean, it takes a bit of time to set up but um, is basically clamp the sides in the mold um, with G clamps on the back and then get this where you want it and make lots of square little blocks around here and actually like screw them into the mold and press down on the top so I mean in the end it's the same result but uh, it helps you you know it's just less it's just um, less major work sort of thing and I really can't I mean making a big plate with a perimeter around it to clamp a guitar is is pretty pretty easier than this kind of shape which is like a turning out to be a bit of a nightmare to be honest anyway um, I'll demonstrate as that goes but what I'm going to do now is um, all these little thickening pieces that are around here what they call the curfling or whatever it's bloody called um, I'm going to shave those down so everything's absolutely flat um, I've noticed with with a couple of these I mean I know the side is recording then <laughs> I, th I know the side is perfectly 135 mil so happy with that so you know yeah he's a bit of a mistake um, this block is actually fractionally lower than the side there so what I'm actually going to do is I'm not going to shave the side down I don't think because the side is going to be correct um, what I'm going to do is just put a bit of um, a veneer over this glue it on on top of this block it's a mistake you know I mean like I said making a musical instrument is a the best skill you can have is hiding your mistakes but I mean here it's perfect here it's perfect you know just a bit of trimming up to do but so we'll get on and carve these all flat and go from there Now I can use my plane to do this kind of thing, just go around the edge, it won't take long. Just be careful you're only taking wood off the, the thickness in strip, not the side, but it's pretty easy to do. Well, this will be uh, quite a few minutes of, of, of doing, so I'll get back to you when it's all done. Well, here we go. I've been round uh, the sides and uh, leveled all these uh, these edge strips, gluing strips off, um, which is all good. Um, I've got a flappy bit here, but I'm not bothered about that. I'll, I'll fix that in when the top is on. Um, the next bit is now um, we want to get prepared to glue the top on um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this out of the mould a little bit because I want I don't want the top anywhere to be like hitting the sides when I'm putting pressure on to glue it down I want the pressure on between the top and the sides 
And what I think I might do um, in order to achieve that, I mean, I was thinking of clamping it in with G-clamps on the back, but it's so flexible, um, you know, when you consider that like an acoustic guitar's sides are about that deep, you're not gonna get any bend. Um, but with this, I mean, I can hold it here, I can bend that down really easily. So I, I'd have to have a thousand and one G-clamps around it. So what I think I'm actually gonna do is raise it, raise it up out of the mold, and then I'm gonna screw a load of small blocks on the back here to keep to that, 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 that I can clamp you know that just to keep the sides up sort of thing um, that's going to be a bit of a pain but I think I think it's the right way to do it and then I won't have clamps all around I can have it flat on the bench and and um, we can go from there so I can get the sides set in the last thing I want to do is start clamping down the top on it and then one of the clamps on the side come loose. You want to make this like idiot proof. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's what we're going to do is make it idiot proof before we clamp it down. Um, so I'll just get on with that. Um, I'll bring you back when I've made a couple of, and shown you what I've done kind of thing. Um, but I think it will be successful. So um, we'll just give it a go. Okay, be back with you soon. Okay, so this is how I've got it set up. Um, so this is what I've done now. See all these little blocks I've put round the outside. I cut them all the same depth so I could line them up so the sides are retained um, evenly all the way round got loads of these blocks holding it holding it in now um, around the middle around the arse of the thing um, so like I say just to take your time because this is an absolutely crucial part of building the thing so now let me put you back on the stand so now basically having had those blocks put in, the, the, the sides can't push out of the mould and th this will become clear now. So what I've got oh good, is I've got the sides now, I can press down as hard as I want on there and the sides are only going to go down to the proper level. So now the next stage is I've got um, the braces in, absolutely squashing the body sides around. So next, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get ready to glue the top. I'm gonna put this where I want it. And then I'm gonna have, um, let me just whiz out. Hang on, I'll get back to you. Sorry about that, but this is what this is what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to make a shed load of these, just a simple small block with a screw hole through the middle, and a bit of scrap. Say, um, put that on there, put that on there, and then put a screw. Not a smaller one than that, but a screw through there so it will clamp the top down on the sides. And then we'll get it all done, dry glued first, well no glue, to make sure that it all goes right, but I reckon I'll probably need, I'm just going to make a buttload of those, because you don't want to be in the middle of gluing it and then find oh, I can do with one more. So I'm just going to chop up a load of bits, but of course, after tidying my shed up and throwing out all the scraps of wood, now I've got no little bits of wood. Uh, maybe these will be all right, I, I don't know. But uh, we, we, we'll sort it out. But you can see this is going to be very successful because I can line it all up, I can trial it first, nothing's wobbling. We're all good, so I'm quite happy about that. So do you know what? I think it's a coffee time. Uh, well, this is what I've come up with now, 
Um, so we've got all these bits of wood that I'm going to basically, um, as you saw previously, like you know, use as clamps. Um, around the edge with like screws through there uh, well I decided to go with plan B um, I actually uh, decided to pin the top in place you can see I used a screw there on the on the neck block which is really nice I and mean, you won't see it because the neck goes over it so that's that's the result um, I put uh, drilled holes and put toothpicks in over these points, so I've got the the top on now, um, in you know located where I want the thing. Uh, uh, one bit of advice before we get going: I've got my dowel pegs in now, um, screw dowel peg there. It's all ready to go. Um, one thing to do though uh, is some few ways you can do it. You can wax the side of the mould um, or uh, any anything really that you know you're going to be gluing this thin edge here and if any glue drips down which it will between the mould and the side um, you're in a world of frustration when you come to pull the thing out. Uh, Let's get gluing the darn thing on. Uh, a bit nervous about it, but there we go. Well, cue horror music movie, uh, movie music, oh god, I really am nervous about this. Plan B for a start. Broken. I'll stick these in here, I think, on this side. So why is that moving like that, honestly? Always something.
got so in the right place. So we've got the screw done up, we've got this pin in properly, we've got that one in and this pin in so we can just get on and start clamping it now. Oh yeah, can't say I enjoyed that much. You don't want to grunge them up too tight, obviously. I mean, things should be flat. When I'm actually getting a lot of squeeze out between round just with those two clamps on, so perhaps I've overdone it with the clamps, but you can never have too many clamps. You definitely can't have too many clamps. It's not possible. I just thought I'd leave this video run um, considering uh, it's the crucial time. Jesus, it's getting warm in here. There we go, turn my little fan heater off. There we go, that's that. Yeah, we're getting good squeeze out, so that's always nice to see when you're gluing up something. All looking good, all looking good. Okay, I think 15 minutes of that is enough. I'll get you back when uh, when I'm all done. Well, I can categorically say that is it for today. Just one job done. Um, glue. So here you go. You can see, just give you a walk around this. You can see, you know, the method of the bridge clamp sort of thing around it. And this is one thing, you know, why you do need to hold the body in the mould firmly because you are actually overall although each individual clamp is not applying shed load of pressure like when you've got them all bolted on there um, you know there's quite a lot of downward force over the whole thing so you know don't go graunching the clamps up too much but um, you know you, you need the, the thing held in the mould firmly um, so yeah, uh, there we go. I, I, I must say, you know, I, I 